games where you can't chalk oh. it up to draft. It's not like, well, okay, they filled the courier. Well, they, they lost did mid. pick a centaur. Well, yeah. But anyway. centaur played pretty well. He had a 15-minute blink dagger. And what did he do with it? He got a couple of stuns. He farmed yeah. an agonims. Eh. I mean, what eh. hero could have replaced centaur to fix that game? The Sand King and pick a different four? I don't know. Just not <laughs> okay, centaur. We could have completely redone yeah. the draft. <laughs> be great. But didn't that feel like an out execution, not an out draft, though? With how back and forth the game was, it felt like yeah. that Spirit just, they had better positioning, better decision making. They just had a little bit more of a cohesive feel where Newbie weren't always quite on that same page. Okay. But okay. did the SD Luna ever do SD Luna things? Did the Centaur no. ever? So is it a draft problem then? It's not my fault they didn't do SD. It's not my fault he didn't level up disruption. I, I tried to tell him to well, get the disruption. Well, speaking of draft problems, we have a draft for you. Let's get into it. Let's yeah, go. Let's see what on. we got here. Take us away. So, I don't know. The, the Shadow Demon Luna, I, just, I still don't quite understand it. It doesn't feel very good in this patch. It feels like a shadow of its former self. And on top of that, they didn't ever really do they it. They did it once down bottom. Okay. but On a Tier 3 when there was no one there. Yeah, they I mean, just hit it, but they didn't know. It didn't really. No. There wasn't a moment we were like, "Wow, this is that illusion <laughs> abuse <laughs> that Boston we have major. forgotten about." <laughs> this is it, right? That moment never came, and I felt like I was waiting for that the entire match. So I guess you are right. Maybe there was a, a degree of outdraft, but uh, maybe they could have played it differently. However, this time, don't newbie, don't say outdraft. Outdraft implies the other team did something better than you in the that's, draft. That's what I'm saying. I I don't. Yeah, think yeah, it but was I an outdraft. feel like it. But like to me, the term outdraft makes it feel like they, like somehow you were beaten by the other team, but they beat themselves. Yeah, but I'm saying it wasn't. Okay, well, but they <laughs> beat themselves in the draft. Can we say that? You you feel me? No, newbie, I think we're splitting hairs over nothing. <laughs> no, here. see, outdraft implies the other team outdrafted you. Like, yes. they had a better draft than you. But it's not so much that the team okay. draft was better. It was the newbie draft just in a short. vacuum. Okay, I, I just see what like you mean. what what yeah. are you doing? Right. Who are these five euros? No, that's that's fair. They, they didn't get into the blockchain Dota. No, that was the not. problem. They, gotta, they, they weren't. They got to draft some blocks. blocks, some better blocks. Well, we've got a couple blocks here. Uh, we've got some big Don't time stuns people. for Spirit. Uh, that'll be Lesh Slardar with their opener and uh, Doom Warlock. Now the opener for newbie. So opening bands: Chen, Night Stalker, Axe, and Clockwork Wisp Naga for Team Spirit. So okay. fairly comparable bands, uh, actually the exact same bands from the last game. So Looks there you go. like a pretty good uh, Weaver game again, if they want to go in towards that. You know, you look at Slardar, certain heroes come to mind. Uh, OD, loves the Corrosive Haze for some vision, track people mm -hmm. through the trees, just a nice uh, hero for OD to help out with. He can hurricane, uh, hurricane Pike someone, and then no matter how far away they are, you still have the visions, so you just slap them with all four of the hits. Mm -hmm. Very good for an OD. Uh, the Weaver, right back in it. The Phantom Assassin, come on in. Wind Ranger, come on in. She just gets banned out, though, just because G's been playing us. So that kind of makes sense. But Slider's got a lot of nice little plus ones that uh, makes it feel good. Yeah, uh, and I I think this opener just, just fits that style of spirit, as we've talked about. Spammable stuns, early yeah. aggression, um, a lot of options. And, I mean, you see that Lesh pick up. What does your gut tell you? Like, oh, that's going to be a G Lesh. Or do you think it's that same old, it's a flex pick, it could be support, could be could be G core, and we'll just see how the draft goes, and then they'll decide. I think, I don't think there's an argument that core is more situational than support. It feels like the, the support's everywhere, it slots in a little easier, okay. it is more common. So that is what I would be forced to treat it as for the most part during the draft. Maybe you give it a couple of respect things and be like, well, if it was core and they had this, yeah. that'd be really well, strong. Well, I kind of so meant in the context this. of we just saw G dominate with that hero okay, as, a, as so a core. What about banning, like, let's say there was an Omni Knight or something for a Team Spirit, and you have, like, Omni Slardar, and then you have this Omni Knight for, like, the Leshrac. That could be pretty strong. Uh, but mm -hmm. you're also up against, like, a Doom and a Warlock who both kind of cancel out Omni. So in this particular game, not yeah. exactly an issue. But No, I, I would agree with you there. Ooh, yeah. the Dazzle wow. picked up for Spirit. Yeah, boy. My boy Dazzle. Okay. Well, pairs very nicely with Slardar, of course. Uh, all of Dazzle spells physical, all that minus armor from his ultimate and hmm. Slardar's ultimate. They play together in one happy little ball of physical damage. Um, also, I, I like Dazzle with Lesh. You know, Grave is good with a lot of heroes, but there are some that it feels just a little better, and Lesh is one of those. That extra five seconds makes a big difference That's when you're talking about disco balls and yeah. uh, split earths and whatnot. He might so. not live after. 
but he's going to do a lot of damage. Exactly. Yeah. That's it's pretty good pairing there. Um, but have not seen much Dazzle yet this tournament. Was buffed a little bit uh, in the yep. last patch. Uh, slightly higher base strength, or was it strength? Base strength or strength gain? Strength gain. Strength gain. Two point three um, or something. Yeah, and they reduced the cooldown on the poison a little bit. The multiple target count thing is meaningless for the most part. Really yeah. inconsequential, but uh, shorter cooldown now uh, on the poison touch. Well, uh, common pairings remaining. Again, it still leans in towards those physical damage carries, the PA and whatnot. Um, the lichen kind of comes into the, the fold maybe a little bit with the wolves and the old... For spirit, you mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. To pair with it. It's always good. Lichen, that could be interesting. I wonder what newbie are going to do to react to this. I think um, this idea of the bounty hunter maybe coming back for newbie, it looks kind of okay here. There's a slider which can cause some problems, uh, but if they are interested in bringing it back, I think Doom is the hero that they kind of need with it, and a weaker support like a Dazzle is someone who you can kind of prey upon and maybe force mm -hmm. the grave on himself. Yeah. Kind of deal. Yeah, absolutely. Takes away Korlesh too, but we'll see what they uh, the take away the lion. So three very long ultimate cooldowns. Very opposite drafts right here. Yeah, there is not a lot slowing down Team Spirit. I mean, there's also still the Death Prophet. But again, it's into Warlock and into Doom. I don't know. In her nerf state, if people are uh, that into her. It feels kind of scary, but we've also seen games where she just itemizes against it. And it's like, you know, Yule's, Lincoln's, BKB, Eon disc. And I mean, she might still die, but she lives long enough that... It still, it works. And with a Dazzle on top of that, you've got extra heals. Yeah. you got the Shallow Grave. It's another hero that Shallow Grave is incredible with. And Axe is banned out. So that'll keep your Shallow Grave nice and safe there. Yeah, still not 100% confident this will be a G Lesh, even with the Dazzle. I think there's a chance this could just be like the DK Phobos Slardar. Like, he was someone who was very good at running these position fours into a three roll and uh, yeah. doing it well, like taking those hyper aggressive heroes like Spirit Breaker, like Night Stalker when no one else was really doing it. Like, well, like he would do the same kind of stuff. It's like the way he played Axe in game two against Navi. You know, this that constant yeah. in and out. He can play Slardar in a very similar way. You know, you don't have the Berserker's Call, but you've got that stun. You can set up for the Lesh very easily. And it makes kind of a, uh, a nice dual offlane like the Lesh Rack um, Saiyan King does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's Very a good point. similar duo. Yeah. Makes you wonder why they went for the um, the slider over the sanking. That, to me, speaks to some sort of a pairing they have in mind here. Do you think it could be just about Roche control? Very nice. No, it's it's a strat. Now, okay. a Visage 2. So we're all in on this physical, and they leave the <laughs> final fifth pick for... Forget about Roche. It's a real strat. <laughs> no, I just... <laughs> No, it definitely has to do with Roche, but I think it's more about a synergistic, like, <laughs> like we we're talked, all physical. We talked for hours today about how no teams are drafting for Roche. Nobody can kill Roche quickly. They finally do it, and you're just like, Roche. <laughs> I didn't know. Why the hell meant. would somebody do that for Roche? Uh, I didn't know what we meant. <laughs> I got you. I got you. But you're right. This is th It's starting to come together here for Spirit. I think the Visage is a nice addition. And now the Gyrocopter. So some nice AoE damage to go with it. Newbie did need a pretty conventional carry here. So I, I think it's a fair pick. Ooh. There's so something about this Spirit draft that I just like, though. I feel like they are drafting to their forte. And I, I look at this Newbie lineup, and I feel like they're reacting to what went wrong in the last game. Is that fair? Uh, there's some reactions, that, but I also think that they're thinking a lot about Team Spirit. Like, they have the line to kind of protect themselves against the possible Weaver, because Weaver's also a very good hero that goes with all of these mm -hmm. uh, uh, physical amp dealios. Uh, it's also pretty good against PA before she has BKB, and even if she buys a super early BKB, she blinks in him and she might just get doomed. So there would be some issues there. Okay. Uh, it is kind of some classic newbie heroes, uh, especially the Gyro and the Doom, so I still feel okay in that regard. And they can just pick their final mid hero here, most likely, mm. uh, for S Triple C. No ban the Templar Assassin. Hmm. What is the safe laner for Spirit? What is the dream here? I think they'll wait to see the fifth from Newbie first, just to guarantee. But I, I'd be pretty surprised if it wasn't Lycan or PA or whatever the other one I was. I think it's going to be Terrorblade. Terribly with the Dazzle. And a Slardar. Roche Control. I actually think the TB looks pretty hot right here. It's a little scary against Lion uh, and Doom, right? They do have some 
you, and I think, Warlock Fatal Bonds. But it's not terrible. you can make that case for pretty much any core here. You know, they have a good lineup to shut down position. Well, bonds. they're down with the uh, the core slider visage and uh, going back for a Underlord. Interesting. So I guess that would make it core less rack and visage and Underlord, but either way. I yeah, I, I'm still fairly confident it's going to be a G Lesh, but uh, I guess really this pick is going to be telling of what they want to go for. Uh, newbie looking for their mid laner here, most likely. Off we've lane Doom, safe lane Gyro. I think the Underlord ban probably comes out because we've seen really similar strategies uh, finished off with a, an Abaddon or an Underlord um, with these kind of like uh, hyper aggressive cores. Oh, so. the Ember. Okay. And they have something in mind. It will be the Drow. Drow Whoa. Visage. Oh, my goodness. 2018. Oh, would you believe Daddy. it? So the Illidan Drow Ranger. So at game a number major. one. Spirit go. Well, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Newbie go. Well, let's try the Shadow Demon Luna. Let's see if some of this old stuff can work. Spirit win the game, and they go. All right, boys. You want to see an old school strat that still works? Well, let me teach you something about Drow Visage. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Trent. This strat still works pretty damn well. Does so it? A lot of the Drow games I watch don't end too well for the Drow Ranger. Well, well it is polarizing. It, it's pretty you, – you either dominate or get dominated. <laughs> so that, that is fair. But the concept of Drow Visage, right, aura yes. on the birds, you can still melt And structures. it's better than it used to be in it, some ways. If the game is even at 30 minutes, yeah. you win a fight, you punish. Yeah. So it, it is certainly viable. Will it work is another question entirely. I do think they have a great lineup built around the Drow, right? Like huge stuns, great ways to peel – uh, Dazzle there to help keep her alive. If there were a Drow game to work, I, f I feel fairly confident about this. I, I really like the Spirit Draft a, a bit more, bud. Uh, I can't say I'm as convinced as you're making it sound. Uh, well, that's, that's fine. That's good. Keeps but it uh, interesting. So what, you th do you think the newbie draft is better, or do you think it's just even down to execution? I mean, wh where are you at with this? I would say that it should be easier to execute for a newbie, I feel like. I feel like there's a pretty hefty window over there for Team Spirit. I mean, it's not as bad as it used to be because talents are there. Like, Drow is some weird-ass talents. Like, this this whole 50% CDR, what, what is that? It comes in at 25 or 20% precision, or if you get a real nice Drow team, you know? She's got some, well, some funky stuff up isn't, there. Isn't that 50% cooldown reduction basically for BKB. That's yeah. that's what I see there. Yeah, Hurricane Pike, BKB, yeah. the silence up against an Ember because Spirit. I don't know. 25, she is weak sauce without magic immunity. Yeah, it's so just wild. It gives her, yeah. I, it's just like, think, you think about the old Drow and why these strats fell apart, and now there's talents, and it's just like, oh, I guess it's a little bit different now. And then Visage yeah. is just a whole other beast these days, and the birds are way better. Exactly. In terms of like the constant damage output. I mean, is just you used so to sick. play it. I mean, I guess Visage Core was sort of a thing, but back yeah. when Drow Visage was popular, it was more support Visage Core Drow, and this is a, a completely different ball game. Uh, G on the the Visage, definitely, definitely confident. I don't know. I, I mean, newbie have a, a fairly conventional lineup, and in some ways, not super hard to execute. But to get those big warlock ultimates, like we saw uh, in the last game from Spirit. The other team has to give you that opportunity. Uh, and I don't know that Spirit is going to be so eager to hand over those five-man chaotic offerings the same way Newbie was in the last match. I think the key hero and player is going to be KP. Yeah. Like, he has to get into these, like, armor auras going for the team. They need to – like, he's the guy who has to build them, and they need a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, if he has a slow start, then this is going to be uh, a little bit tough. And at the same time, he also probably needs to be initiator to get onto the, the drow. So he's kind of st – he's stuck. Like – Unless they're going to give a lot of farm to Kaka for the uh, the Blink Dagger. KP has too many rolls that he needs to execute in this game, which maybe will be their downfall. It can definitely be rough uh, on a Doom. So down bottom, what do we have here? Warlock Gyrocopter against Flesh Slardar. Trent, you got a couple of hero blocks down here. This is pretty nice. Two stuns here for Spirit, and you got the old... Heal for the Gyrocopter, so he can play a little more aggressive than usual, perhaps. Take a little bit more of that harassment. The old beaten. Yeah, we've talked about, like, uh, Warlock plus Spectre, uh, these heroes that can't really fight. You can play aggressive. You know, why not bully a little bit and try and use your HP as kind of a second mana bar? Trade yeah. and, uh, and attacks and blows, and then try and have that shifted back from the Warlock. Now, I will say FNG's Dazzle set could use a little work. He's got the, the Whippy set. Now, this is a cheap one. So there's a lot of rare Dazzle cosmetics out oh, okay. there, and this is uh, one of the lowbrow sets. Unacceptable. So. 
He's got that cool just immortal thing, though. That's that thing's worth like fifty cents. It oh, ain't. Come on. It ain't shit. If it's not gold, I don't want to hear about it. All right, I, I got you. So what about this mid matchup, though? Uh, Ember Spirit and Visage. Visage, Dota. Um, is yeah, it uh, is it Visage uh, dominated? Uh, well, I don't know. It's not. It's not really dominated, or else they you know they wouldn't go for the pick. <laughs> it's fine. So it's a wash. Is that yeah, kind of the? I the would say it's pretty wash. It's pretty okay. wishy washy. But then Visage, you know, he gets oh, the levels going. Beaver. This is gonna be the first blood. It's gonna be close. Not going to be able to TP in time. It's the first blood for Moogie. thing about Ember is that unless they have a really high mobility thing, he's not going to get like destroyed in a matchup because he'll just leave. He's like, all right, this isn't going that well. I'm just going to go hit these neutral camps over here. And yeah. If you don't have a way to threaten them, then That's the, the match instantly becomes a wash. That's fair. Well, seems even so far. Uh, SCCC pulling ahead a little bit with this wave, but... Relatively even thus far. Uh, Drow Ranger, not quite farming up to snuff. And up top, we'll actually see some initiation come their way. FNG. Oh, yeah. He's got that Seder or a baby. He's getting clicked down. He's also got the Hadouken. There is no shallow grave and actually doesn't go for it. All right. That would have been pretty close. He had 120 HP. It does 160. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't have at least try it. It's a lot of mana, though. Very true. Uh, Going to go back in on the Illidan as down bottom, though. That'll be a dead faith as DK Phobos connects with a stun. Phobos is farming really well on this Slardar. He's out farming the Gyro character right now. Yeah, he's got his Crawling Blade. He's a melee hero. Uh, he's being kind of protected by the Lightning for the most part. These and are those moments where Warlock can feel a little underwhelming in the lane. It's like, sure, the heal is really annoying, but... It's, it's not enough to just straight up win them the lane against this double stun combo. This damage is just too bursty for the Warlock to reliably deal against it. Here, they're going to find him again! Oh my, this bottom lane is turning disastrous for Newbie. I mean, usually it's enough. I think he just played too far outside the tower and just got killed. That's... I've seen Spectres live against these lanes, and it's just like, all right, they, this is broken, you know? Well, right, level dispersion three is it. quite a thing, you know, compared to a gyrocopter, but I'll let that pass. Dazzle. There we go. This time he connects with the Hadouken. And uh, KP will bring down FNG. No shallow grave leveled up, so. Fairly normal to save grave to level three, but this time he gets punished for it. I think I also hate this Dazzle set because you can see they removed his mohawk and he looks bald and it's just disgustingly ugly. <laughs> he used to have a mohawk built into his base model and then they put the mohawk into his sets. Sorry, buddy. It's, it's awful. It's one of many cosmetic bugs I can't handle. Warlock down bottom, too much first damage again. Trent, was it positioning this time or is it that the Warlock can't quite do it? It looked like positioning. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they, they got a pause. <laughs> They're like, guys, is that Warlock lagging? We should pause for him. So. <laughs> Kale on the other side of the fence here. Looks like... No, uh, they, they knew. They knew? They saw what the Warlock was doing. as a guy. He must be lagging. So they paused for him. The newbie are very kind. You mean spirit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. See. What? <laughs> Yep, he's in some trouble here. I meant here. Team Secret. The, uh, oh, I see. Oh, that's the kill. Okay, G had enough with the soul assumption. Wasn't sure if it would be quite enough there, but that's a big kill in the mid lane. The last hits are uh, relatively even, but that will tip the scales a little. Gets Visage very close to his level 6, and of course, that's when his real kill power comes out. Oh, get the medallion, move into the helm of the Dominator. What a hero. Yeah. Yeah. Just gets nasty. So... How do they fix this bottom lane? Do they just hide under the tower? Is it, well, like, is look it at too Warlock. late? I What's mean, he doing? You're not Am wrong. I crazy? Well, at first I actually thought you were crazy, but now that I'm seeing it again, this is like the third time he's been called out way too forward. And like, the heal just, it, why, it's simply not when enough. I, when I watch this dual lanes with these Warlocks, they're here. This is their box. They don't leave the box. You leave the box, you die. Well, you just yeah. keep healing your core, you chill in the box. He's leaving the box. Yeah, it's it's odd. He's like trying to steal home or something out there. I don't know what he's doing. And of all the duo, this is a really aggressive offlane duo, right? This is one where you need to be extra careful because you know if you get clipped by one lightning, one stun, that follow-up's going to be there. Now up top, Lion initiated on by a gust. Dazzle does not have grave. He actually went for heal at level two. Drops it across, does some decent damage. I don't know that grave would have been enough to really change things there, but 
Still an interesting build out of FNG throwing a lot of right clicks onto Kaka. Oh, Slider is coming for the party. I don't know if he's going to be here in time to catch him. Oh, actually, oh. with that cut in from Kaka, he will be. Yeah, Kaka goes to the low ground, and now with another poison touch, this is going to be a kill. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, Beaver rotates and kills S Triple C. Really nice. That's going to be seven and a half now for the Visage. And Ember is not yet six. He's still just shy, stuck at level five. Slardar finds a stun on Doom up top. Dazzle rotates in. Look at this build from FNG Trent, 2-0-2. Two, two. Meanwhile, down bottom, Beaver. That's going to be a homing missile under the tower, but hey, he had some raindrops. Not enough to save him. Faith will actually get credit for that kill. Deep play there by Moogie with the help of that Observer Ward on the high ground. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is, I mean, Ember Spirit, Storm Spirit, they got a, a couple things in common, and one of them is pre-6. If you give any sort of an edge to your opponent, someone comes and ganks your lane and they get a little bit of experience ahead of you, it really hurts. Uh, yeah, you can see it right here. He's, 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 in, he's in the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and forcing out the glyph. This is the other thing with Visage. When you pull ahead like this, it's so easy to pressure the tower. Yeah, he, he absolutely cannot do anything. You know, it's like Death Prophet. Sure, you can pop the ult, but you, you kind of want to rotate. You need to be careful up in the top lane. We will see that initiation come out onto the Drow Ranger. She survives a little bit longer than planned, but Phobos can't quite get there in time. They will turn onto Kaka. They've got the right clicks to make it a one for one. Not ideal for Spirit, but they do still get that tier one tower mid in the meantime. G actually getting the last hit there. Medallion up, and that hooded to fight, or pardon me, the Helm of the Dominator will be coming out. Look at that gap he's created now, too, with the tower kill, with the driving the Ember to deaths and to the neutral camps. Uh, yeah. 1,200 gap just appearing. He's almost on the Helm of the Dominator. Yeah, it's insane. The HOTD, Trent. Well, Lesh going to be solo down bottom, trying to give Beaver a little bit of solo XP up against three. And it's actually turned into a safe lane try for Spirit. After Slardar TP'd up, he's just kind of been lingering around. But he's got his tread, 600 gold towards that Blink Dagger. Definitely been a good start for him this game. The Drow Ranger feels like the one weak link for Spirit. Illidan kind of picked on a little bit. Lowest of the net worth in terms of cores. Yeah, he was, of course, providing a little bit of damage, though, to that mid lane. Mm -hmm. Certainly helped that out. Sure. Uh, maybe when they picked the Ember Spirit, they didn't think it would be quite this bad without the Drow Aura. But... Helping with those denies. You know, you got 17, maybe a bit higher in your average vicious uh, game here, but. Oh, they see KP. He's out of mana, too. It's a level six doom, the poison touch. Sardar actually falls short on his stun. That's a little bit unfortunate, and they won't commit too deep. FNG. Well played, says FNG. No mercy. <laughs> So S Triple C though, uh, with that rotation, does get a little bit of space in the mid to recover. Uh, that helps him out at least gets uh, most of the way through level seven. So able to jump back to safety. Small lead for Spirit. About 1K net worth at the 10 minute mark. Does now newbie rotate down bottom. Yeah, they still just have G like sitting mid though. Easy. It's dead Lesh, yeah. yeah. Plenty of burst damage there. Like it on the one hand, oh, KP. This time they'll hit the crush. This time it should be a pretty easy kill with the Drow Ranger rotating. It's only a, a level one frost arrow, but that's enough. Now back to the Radiant Jungle. They're gonna go in on the G. Call down gets queued up. The birds trying to buy him some time, but he's stunned, taking a rocket barrage to the face. It's a dead visit. And his bird's gonna get killed as well. Oh, that was an uphill miss, actually. That's unfortunate. I I just don't really like what G was doing. Farming very aggressively in enemy territory with no vision nearby. Yeah, it was pretty high risk, low reward. And uh, now Faith will get caught down bottom for the yeah. uh, fourth time. I mean, the th they do get that, right? They get the punish, they know they all rotated in. They're what? pulling people away from the drow. Like, maybe that's that's all part of it. These are all things that are happening because of what G's doing, and you think mm. you're going to get away with it, but it's just like, what if he just, like, went to the tower with drow? Yeah. Like, is that thing just melted? It, it feels like it. Like, he had his helm. It felt like he was ready to rotate. Yeah, I kind and of And now agree. instead he TP's bottom, and now there's just, like, mid wasn't even pushed out now because you died and didn't go back. Yeah. So now there's a siege wave ember spear, and he's recovering. He's 300 gold behind Visage. Yeah. And he's going to be tied after this tower. You're right. It's actually insane how quickly it's recovered. And now, geez, is he going to come down and walk to his death again? 
The cooldown's been utilized. Slardar's trying to slither his way in, but there's the ult from the Warlock. Phobos finds the stun on Gyro, but now we'll have to head back home. Why are you alone? Where is your team? You're a Visage. This that, is a Drow strat. That was really peculiar. I mean, I know it's support Drow up top right now, but anyway, in the meantime, uh, Viva, yeah. he did get the deny in the mid lane. So Ember did not get the gold, neither did the rest of the team newbie. So at least there's that. Yep, but uh, still a little scary for Spirit. Have to remember that they're a very momentum-based draft, and Drow certainly has some uh, capability to recover, but if you're ahead like this on a visit, you certainly don't want to throw it away. FNG able to de-ward, soon to expire, but find some return on the investment there for the Sentry Ward. Now down bottom, they will mount a defense. And Slardar, Beaver on the way in, set up on the Faith. They find the stun. Lion trying to break it up, but it seems Warlock will get left behind, and G will grab yet another kill. Yeah, pretty solid stun there just to help them escape from Kaga. Looks like Ember is, is he going to go physical? The old Battle Fury dopes. He's got his Yules for now. Worried about the Drow Silence. Yeah. Never the ideal first item on Ember, I, I think. You know, some games you feel forced into it. You need that survivability tool, but definitely uh, not your first choice if you could have your your pick yeah, of the litter. Your bots or something. Bots or Battle Fury or Veil. I mean, there's so many other items. Even Maelstrom. <laughs> I guess Maelstrom's pretty shit on Ember now, but still. Meanwhile, Lesh in a little bit too far forward. Beaver kind of following suit with the same sort of plays we uh, just saw from G a few moments ago in a little bit too far forward without the support right there. Just like that, it's a freebie. Well, there are dire heroes nearby, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to coax this triple C in there. And Yule Scepter now delivered. Now certainly going to be harder to kill that Ember, that's for sure. Top lane, Moogie definitely getting some space to recover. He's got uh, the Aghanims queued up. Almost uh, now number three on net worth. Down bottom, Slardar connects the crush onto Ember and wowzers. <laughs> I like the model, it collapses. Yep, I mean, I, I guess the uh, Medallion and uh, Slardar ult will do that. Ember not really known for his high armor. Almost like a fake back here. So Dazzle smokes up with the other two, moves himself right next to Visage in vision of the creep wave. However, of course, he's smoked, and now he's hiding down here with the grave. So protecting G in his very aggressive position while they head mid, looking to catch the heroes rotating over, but it's only two. And it's yeah. versus three. Beautiful stun from Lesh on three. The call down connects onto Phobos. And Phobos is going to be able to live. No, it's a beautiful Warlock ult. FNG can't grave him in time, but they do kill Mugi. KP going in deep. He'll go down as well, but they also lose Beaver. It's a pretty even trade thus far, but the Dazzle in the background is dropping the heals. It was not a proper 5v5 as Drow was just farming all the while, but they also killed a Warlock Golem. So for Spirit, that's a pretty big win. A 4v5 where they trade even and get the Golem, plus their safe lane carry, get some of that valuable farm at his level 11. Yeah, that was like a 25 minute play being done so early. I mean, you're, yeah. you're forcing down this tower, you try and cut off people who are coming through that really common rotation from the mid lane. They didn't expect it to be uh, the oh, entirety of no. newbie. That was Shabam. so greedy from Illidan. He just walked up in the darkness to try to get the bounty rune and there were two heroes standing there. Yeah, come on man, it's 15 minutes, you gotta get those things. Gotta make yeah. some cash for the team. All of that space we just talked about being made for him was just pissed away because he walked into darkness from the low ground, Trent. That's what we call low risk, no reward. Or high risk, no reward. Uh oh, Faith. Getting chopped down by Phobos here. I don't think Phobos is going to have the damage to find a solo kill without help. He needs to be a little careful because there are TP rotations from the Radiant. Ember's on the way, so is Mugi. Slardar too far forward. His team is inbound, but he's going to die before they get here. Another one of these situations for Spirit yeah, where they're just work. not quite on the same page. If they can get S triple C, that would be huge, but oh. they can't even do that. Now on the other side, TP out, and Warlock will be okay. You can see how it all came together, though, because he's like chasing. He doesn't want to crush, because if he crushes, he'll TP, and then just get away. So he's to hold the crush. 
and he's like, oh, my team's coming, it's gonna be fine. It's like, oh, I'm dead, but my team's here, it's gonna be fine. And then suddenly they get no kills. And you're like, man, what don't we just do for a minute? What a waste. Well, it's like you said earlier, you know, you gotta be careful when you're committing deep near shrines. And that's exactly what turned the tides there. Ember was yeah. able to jump into that shrine. He's right there and what started as, hey, this is a warlock who's all by himself. Now you're a Slardar against three heroes. And it was an easy rotation for Newbie. But still a pretty tight game. If we glance at that gold yeah. graph, it's topsy-turvy, but all centered around that zero net worth and really haven't seen more than a 1K, 1,500 net worth lead or so as both teams continue to skirmish back and forth. Uh, SCCC, despite recovering pretty well, not quite on pace uh, with the Visage. The Visage is still farming up towards that Agonims, and up next he has the Maelstrom queued up on the Ember. Okay. I was thinking he might go for the Battle Fury, but uh, going for the magic damage. Oh, like that. I mean, the, you is have Maelstrom the, uh, still go-to on Ember? I, I thought that, that kind of fell off a little bit since they changed uh, the recipe. Well, he doesn't need the attack speed, right? Because it's yeah, every attack true. from your slight, so the oh, speed yeah. it doesn't matter. No, you're right, yeah. I, so it's totally fine. I'm not an Ember player. As you can see. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I I redacted, Trent. Thank you for the, re the redact. And FNG, he might barely live. No, oh, gets finished off before he can grave himself, but he will buy back once the TP to this shrine. And Newbie on the retreat. They've lost their Doom. And maybe even more with Dazzle here. Moogie's going to be able to TP home. Slardar has the blink, jumps forward, and Warlock, he'll get brought down. So another one of these little trades that ends up going the way of Spirit. FNG does not hesitate on the buyback, and this time it proves totally worth it. Yeah, it's time now. We got the Aegis. 18 minutes. Pretty much on track. All three towers should go down here with this Aegis. Yeah. Man, do they go fast. Warlock's going to be back in time for all right, probably just the mid-tier two, honestly. I, I don't think he's going to get back in time for that top tier two. Well, the Glyph is definitely going to help things out, but it just dies so damn fast. As soon as this Glyph is done, it's going to start to melt. The Dire Heroes are a little bit too far, though. I don't think they can commit anymore. Yeah, they're not going to be able to finish it off. Dazzle gets a pretty good weave, reduces a lot of armor on the side of Newbie. Oh, maybe they want to fight now. They can find the opening. Spirit's still positioned pretty defensively here. On the other side, set up onto the Leshrac. Beaver all alone. Something just feels off about Spirit this game, Trent. It just doesn't quite feel like they're on the same page compared to the last three games we just saw. From I mean, this one is... The, the tightest draft they've had in terms of, like, it has to be pretty damn perfect. That's fair. Uh, and they haven't been that flawless in the games today, so it, it kind of gets exposed a bit here. I, I wouldn't describe their play as flawless, but I, I would say cohesive is, is a word. Like coordinated. Coordinated. This game, there's been a lot more solo deaths, and I think that's that's been pretty rare in the games we've seen from Spirit today. There have been several moments where I'm just like, oh, yeah, they're just going to five-man, and then one guy's just, like, hitting a jungle exactly. camp on his way, and you're like, oh. I, I almost feel like they're overthinking it or something. Like they're trying to get fancy and split, and they... They just need a death ball, you know? They just need to take these big fights. Maybe a little bit afraid of the Warlock Ultimate because they saw how much power it has when you're clumped up like that in the last game when they were playing it. Yeah. So maybe just respecting the nature of that mechanic, but now Lion is going to get caught solo the other way. Kaka going to try to TP out. It's going to be close, but no cigar as Phobos wakes up and gives him one last bash of the trident. 3K net worth lead now for Spirit as they continue to work the map. This visage, Visage, he is farming at an incredible rate. He has the full Agonims now, Trent. Yeah, it is so speedy. Just feels like G is everywhere. Top, Ember, able to Yule, able to Yule Scepter. So Ember has the Blink queued up after the Mjolnir. They've got uh, does it does it make sense to upgrade the Mjolnir kind of first item here on the Ember, given how little he cares about attack speed? Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean it's the stack shield's pretty cool, right? Oh, it's it's definitely good. I'm just like BOTs or just going for the blink next, for example. Like it feels like the Mjolnir is just sort of an odd next item to me, given yeah you know, another initiation tool, for example. Uh, obviously, you want to upgrade it eventually. I'm more just questioning the timing. 
Yeah, I would say it's a little bit weird. It's like it's a little more damage on the lightning prong, but yeah. Let's you farm faster though, in terms of like when you're not sliding. Well, that's true, uh, no doubt. Well, tier two mid. Uh, there used to be a tower there. It's gonna stay standing for now as Doom comes out on Visage and the Warlock ult. Lesh getting pretty low. Moogie doing big damage off to the side and Spirit bit off a little more than they could chew on this one. Beaver does get the Grave and it's actually enough to turn the kill onto Moogie and now with the Aegis used, can they finish off G? Doom up on the high ground. He'll be next to get brought down and G is just a little bit too tanky. It's a two for two if you're losing the Aegis. Courier, Courier gets flies into the there. danger zone there. Illidan wants it, but can't quite get there. So without the Aegis, that would have been a bit more disastrous for Spirit. A very odd positioning that's set up for Newbie to get a good initiation, but in the end, they weren't really able to capitalize that hard. We saw that the Grave on Lesh. With the Catapult, they're going. They're in. Now, buybacks are available on Newbie, but with 10 seconds left, you really don't want to use them. This is the conundrum of Drow Visage right here. They're hitting this timing. They eviscerate the tower. They make it a 5k net worth lead now. And they'll just start to back up. The upheaval slowing them down a little bit. And Spirit just smoke. Maybe go back for shrines. Or they're just going to fake back. FNG smoke gets broken as he drops some wards. This is a very interesting bait from Spirit, but it might work as they go in onto KP. The follow-up's there from Lesh, the right clicks. And KP goes down. Buyback is available on the Doom. Homing Missile does connect on Visage. Risky business, man. Spirit are super committed to this, though, and they want to go. Kind of want to wait for Aegis. 10 seconds on Glyph. G, the call down. It's going to do a lot of damage. BKB popped by Moogie. There's the shallow grave. They get the kill on Kaka. Buyback now by Kaka. Dazzle in a lot of trouble without a grave. Limited on heal. Double buyback, but they lose Moogie. These Visage Birds just hit too damn hard, Trent. Big time economic do damage done to Newbie. Wow. I thought that was kind of like nearing the end of it there for them, but uh, bringing down Moogie. Bad news. That's uh, Triple C. will come on in there and clean up Biva, though. That's pretty nice. Now Spirit will have to retreat. They don't want to lose this Drow Ranger who's just picked up a Shadow Blade. But multiple buybacks. It is just the two supports, but still two buybacks. They get the tier three. It opens up shrines. But also not that bad for Newbie. They are hanging on there. Yeah. KP has his uh, Crimson Guard. Well, the uh, the shrine change certainly made it so that Nature's Prophet is a hard time just bringing them down quickly with Treants. But Visage, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not quite. KP is going to come in and make this a little bit more difficult, but uh, yeah, no saving. He can't run. even do anything. <laughs> he honestly, he's like afraid that this is bait. You know, if there's somebody up on the high ground that's just going to come in and he gets triple stunned, uh, that's a kill on the Doom. So, understandably nervous. Faith, though, yep, he's invisible, but obviously the corrosive haze uh, counteracts that. Yeah, pretty good. There'll be another kill on the Warlock. Technically a dieback on him, so stuck in the grave a bit longer than he would like as that top shrine does go down. Bottom shrine still standing. Spirit getting a little bit more control over the map. Yeah, until he decides to just send the birds down. All right. Oh. Do you think bots are, are the play lost on Ember? the Dire Courier, too. Oh, that's a bummer. I think bots are the play. Yeah, he uh, did go for the blink before the Mjolnir. So, uh, I mean, the blink he needs for high ground defense. Uh, he needs damage. I think they are approaching. So he yeah. has to fight. Uh, currently, Roche is what I'm interested in. Is Dazzle going to get some trouble here? FNG hit by the homing missile. Can't grave as he gets hexed. And SCCC secures himself an unstoppable streak. So it's going to be about two and a half minutes until Roche is up. Okay. Uh, relatively long spawn there. It was like yep. 252 to start. It's one of the longer ones you're going to get. Absolutely. Bit unlucky for Spirit in this context, but 4,600 gold on Drow. What's the item, Trent? Wow, he's sitting that high. He just bought a Shadow Blade. Uh, he's probably considering if he wants to buy a BKB or not, I would think. Um, or if he just wants his Hurricane Pike and buy back. Well, let's find out. He'll buy the BKB. Okay. I like the BKB, personally. I like it, too. Warlock, Alt, and Doom. 
A lot of physical damage right. still from Visage the Gyro. Visage buys one, two, we're in. All right, let's get our BKBs. Double BKB, and there is the Mjolnir up on the Ember Spear. Definitely a good item when you're holding that high ground. Yeah. Clear out the creep wave, just get all that AOE damage going. And now he'll go back for your bots and whatnot. Like, now that he has that defense, now he can threaten side lanes. Yeah, bots and Shivas. Okay, so, so the... So, overall, though, they just need to bait out Golem, basically. Um, not lose anyone, fall back. And that is kind of what will spell the end of this game, it feels like. I think at this point they want to wait out the road. Still going to be another 90 seconds, but Team Spirit lingering around that area, knowing that it could be up at any minute now. Are they going to catch an initiation here? Ember Spirit scouting things out, being a big-time nuisance. But it seems that Spirit are pretty unrelenting with their positioning, that they, uh, they want to control the pit. This is theirs. This is their house. No smokes available on Newbie right now. Don't see any. And one minute on Roche. Looks like Courier might fly out of smoke for him so they can try a rotation wraparound. All right, yeah, there it is. Well, they actually cut through the river instead. Scary That's a angle. a lot of lines. Scary angle to initiate. Both teams know. Yeah, big and big implications for both sides. But really good positioning here from Spirit, holding the high ground. They've got a siege creep here also. Phobos breaks the blink, blinks away. Phobos yules himself, but the Doom comes out on Visage, and they're just going to lock down the Doom. He's probably going to be the first one to fall in this fight. FNG will get brought down as well. BKB is now expiring. Illidan in a lot of trouble, has no way to escape. It ends up being a one for two. And they, okay, two for two now as they grab one more on the backside oh. and maybe another. The Ember gets clipped. And there it is, a triple kill for G. The cleanup commences and Spirit have taken this fight. Faith gonna get caught by the Corrosive Haze and it will set up the ultra kill for G. And remember, DK Phobos was the one that popped that smoke and instantly blinked up and over them to be like inside and then like got some stuns off there, danced around, comes back for another stun later on to secure the kill in the Ember Spirit. Absolutely massive, and that should be Rax if they just want to push mid. Uh, yeah. They do have some creeps with them. Unfortunate for Spirit that uh, they did lose their Drow Ranger there though. Oh, they're going to bail for the Roche? I guess the Gyrocopter, that's actually fair. There it is. That's uh, Roche 2, so HGs. Man, that Ember just overstayed his welcome. And Visage really punished it. Yeah. He's like the team fight control this fight, or this game, which is a pretty tough ask, obviously. Um, the he, Ember or the Visage? The Ember. Yeah. Like he has to try to dance in there, jump, grab people, set up for call downs. Maybe scout it a little bit for Doom to find someone, even for someone like the Lion to get that nice two-man impale off. It can be a tough one. Might be able to grab the Warlock here, smoked up. Yeah. Wards down, now on the high ground. Dire Observer, Radiant Sentry. Drow Strat's doing it. Yep, like One you racks down. Mentioning the uh, Drow Visage, able to clear out barracks pretty effectively. All three Visage birds get killed. That's a, a pretty nice bounty going the way of the Moogler. Now the jump out of base. S Triple C connects with chains on two. Oh, it's not going to go in. B from Illidan. Man, they are really disciplined. And just like that, Spirit Retreat. Ooh, how far back, though? A DD rune for Illidan. Let us fight, he says. Uh-oh. See if we can't find something. No. Gets the marksmanship, too. BKB on Drow for another 40, however. Six. She's going to do a lot of damage. She, she just, like, two-shot that building. Yeah, Mordor jumps in just to try to make a little space, but they commit to the back line. They obliterate the Drow. It's a great hold from Team Newbie. G pops his BKP. Shallow Grave TP can be interrupted by the Dazzle. 
Can they get more out of this? There's the stun on the visage, and it looks like they will bring down G as they dust him. Beaver also on the run, does have a Yules, and he'll make it back. Now the Aegis, gonna bring Visage back to life, and that'll be the end of him. So newbie, they kill three, they finish the Aegis. Yeah, but I'm guessing those birds are the ones that took out that melee racks. Because, uh... Oh yeah, there's no, uh, no racks there. Yep. Sneaky hero. I mean, and it's it's a nice fight for newbie, but I'm not convinced it's going to be enough to really swing the momentum here. I'm kind of feeling new, newbie have this. You think so? Yeah. Really? I think it's uh, we're getting to the point where the respawns are getting larger on Team Spirit, which means every time they die, there's this bigger gap where you you're going to have the golem back up again, and the golem just murders them. That's true. Um, the longer the game getting goes getting huge. On. Yeah. See, with Drow Visage, though, don't you hit to this get to this point where like buybacks become really scary as well because you can just punish so hard. Yeah, for sure. You know, like he uses the golem, he wipes them, they buy back, they wipe them, and then how do they defend high ground without gold? Those are the kind of scenarios that I think Spirit could still potentially find to win this game, but I will agree with you. It's uh, feeling a little bit rough. You look at that gold graph and it's like, yeah, you had a pretty decent lead and it is now completely gone. It's a zero net worth difference. And Ember is really coming online to feel like a, a proper core at this point. Uh, Shiva's Gar going to be his next item and already 3k towards it. Feels like maybe it's time for Newbie to make a move, but they've just been pretty passive. I guess they don't necessarily have to do anything. Uh, they have this Ember Spirit. He's farming quite a bit. He's just hopping onto these waves, feeling pretty safe. Uh, looks like they're playing against a Tinker down bottom where they're just waiting for Triple C to show up down there. But he goes top once more. He reads the situation. He's got a little bit of Observer Wards inside that dire jungle. No one's defending. They're all waiting bottom for him. So he's not going anywhere. I, I also am surprised that Drow has not gone Hurricane Pike. I feel like that mobility tool is really crucial for her staying alive in a game like this where you've got so many heroes that can catch and chain disable you. Yeah, maybe just hoping for the Lincoln Sphere has been doomed a couple times. Yep. I mean, I think you, you kind of need both. You know, it's one of those games where you need to itemize to survive. Crimson Guard is up on the Slardar, so that will uh, definitely help. And Visage Assault Karas can be on the way, and actually not that far off. That might be our last hurrah. I mean, we've hit a 35-minute game, Drow lineup, pretty damn fast one at that, and you're losing. So, not a good sign. Against a Gyro and Ember Spirit, two of the better Mega Lates. That's true. Gyro now has the Manta to go with his BKB and Butterfly. His last item of choice, Dire Courier. That's got a Hyperstone on it, and it lives. <laughs> close one. A little close. A little close. All right, that's the AC for Visage right there. All right, one more time. Definitely turning into a slightly more passive game here. At this point, Newbie are farming more quickly. Yeah, they do not really care. Uh, and they have that key aspect of this where um, you have someone who can push the waves without compromising your five-man Dota. So Ember Spirit can just keep uh, throwing down Revenants, going to a different lane, pushing the wave, coming back over and over. And that's uh, those kind of plays are what allow them just five-man for the rest of this game. And, Probably not lose. The five man shall continue. All five of newbie down bottom. BKB's ready. What do you do if you're speared here? Do you just try to take this into a split push? Do you try to trade knowing that you can push better and that newbie probably won't let you trade? They'll get that tier two. I think you're waiting on using your superior roach taking. Yeah, that's You don't want to do anything too stupid until then. Yep, minute 20 until uh, we see what that RNG timer looks like. And then one last hurrah. Yeah. Refresher shard. Not really a great refresher carrier. 
And I guess like double stun from Slardar is okay. Give it to Drow for the double BKB. I mean, against the flat cannon, you could argue the birds, because once they're gone, like yeah. once the flat cannon charges their out, you could summon more He does more birds. have a BKB on the visage, so, you know, refreshing a BKB is always good. Yep. Definitely options. Now the butterfly. Yeah, the drow starting to feel a little underwhelming. Man, this game just got completely paused. Yeah. It's a little peculiar. It went from very action-packed to now very stalemated. Yeah, it's been about five minutes, I believe, since we've had a kill. The drow ranger strat. I mean, it kind of makes sense. You're at this point with the drow ranger strat where you're really strong early. Your mid game's a little bit rough, and then if you can make it through the mid game without falling too far behind, you start to come back towards that late game a little bit. And Lincoln's will help. She's got it now, has the recipe on the courier. And it's a 45 second rush spawn, so very quick. Or he'll be back here. Looks like we could see a fight before Roche becomes a big factor. Visit. Got here. There's that Lincoln. Now it's smoke on the backside of Moogie. Yeah, a little bit of protection here. They wander in. They're going to find some dire heroes. FNG breaks the smoke onto Kaka. Yeah, that was nice. TP's out. And it even gets him to waste a Tinker Ward on the high ground. Trying to find whoever it was that broke his smoke. Damn, that was a value TP. Yeah, they'd also just used the glyph too, so he kind of felt pressure to throw the ward up. Switched up Ember. Alright, it's time. We are ready for Roche. Roshan is here. Look at that gold graph. What a game it's been. It was a pretty decent <laughs> lead for Spirit, and that's uh, when your Drow draft uh, starts hey. losing momentum. Yeah. XP looking relatively similar to Boot Visage. He's got that familiar movement speed now. Almost level 25. So how do you go about the Roche Pit here? It's actually a little scary for Spirit, even though they do have the better team for taking Roche in theory. Nubia are really incredible at the pit. They've got great AoE damage, and yeah. I would be pretty hesitant to just jump in there and try to commit to a 5v5. Yeah, I think you, uh, you're you looking for the pickoff. Ideally, you're trying to catch Ember on one of these side waves, but it has not been a uh, successful endeavor for them so far. Yeah. Smoke now purchased by Dazzle. Here's the initiation. Are they going to be able to bring down the Lesh? The Doom comes out on the Slardar. They also drop the Rock. It's looking bad for Spirit. They get Phobos, but they need more. Dazzle drops the slow onto KP, trying to make space for Illidan to survive. Illidan with a decent gust knocks him back. It's like Beaver dies off on the backside, so it's a quick two for nil. Oh, the gem too. Yeah, it hurts. I'm starting to agree with you here, Trent. This might be newbie's game two to take us to that ace match decider. Still a little ways to go to close this out, but they are looking in control. No real move coming out here. They don't really have the heroes to make a move either. Uh, yeah, without less, look how slow they kill it though. Yeah. My God. 40 minutes in, they've got it down to about half HP. Give him the bird. At this rate, the Slardar is going to respawn in time to come steal this eight. I don't know if Doobie can do this, Trent. They don't have a Warlock Golem here. They don't have Doom. Illidan cannot afford to die, though. Kaka with that Eon Disc. Where's the team for Spirit? FNG on his way in. Shallow Grave comes out, but the upheaval so helpful here. He doesn't have the Force Staff. They lose FNG, now the buyback used there. Kaka did end up going down to G. Can Spirit turn this fight around? G with the BKB on, trying to do what damage he can. The Golem comes down as Warlock falls, and this time Phobos dies again. 
Starting to feel like Spirit just don't have the resources. They're getting cleaned up at their own shrine. Now the TP in from Beaver one at a time as they jump to their death. Newbie secure a full five man wipe perhaps. Is Beaver gonna live through this? They're all low on mana. One more right click from Moogie ought to do it. Oh, oh the glimmer. Nice glimmer cape. They have the gem though. And that'll be good. So all five of Spirit die. Ooh, I don't think they noticed this gem. That's convenient. So that'll be dropped down over in the trees for a while. Man, Spirit are just not in sync this game. It almost looks like a different team compared to game one. Like that fight was just one at a time. Like that fight, that fight started with Drow Ranger alone, pops the BKB, Dazzler runs in to try to save her, they both die, then Slardar runs in, he dies, then all of a sudden Beaver TP's in, he dies. It wasn't even a team fight. No, and that's gonna be the uh, refresher shard here now. So it's Newbie who are so firmly in control with a 16K lead, and uh, our series is a series, it would seem. It looks like it. I mean, now this is in the hands of Newbie to throw, is what it feels like. One lane of barracks, not really gonna matter all that much. Of course, that is the advantage the Spirit has. Newbie still need to figure out how to close this one out though. And if they fail going high ground, Always scared of that Drow Visage at any stage of the game. You know, newbies still have to respect that if they make one misstep, if they take one bad fight and get cleaned up, Spirit can just rush towards their base and do a pretty crippling amount of damage. Sodar getting close to level 20. Drow also getting close to, uh, close to level 25. 50% cooldown reduction. Yeah, it's helpful. I don't know how much of a game changer it's really gonna be in these fights. Seems like Spirit's problem is more positioning based than anything else. Yeah, I think a lot of the problems are just gonna be like hero based. They just they don't have a a, a mid game draft. They don't have a, a late game draft. They have a draft strat. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it relies on there being no counter initiation from the warlock. They have to hop on top of like this gyrocopter and suddenly there's just no help. No one can get doomed, I mean, which they haven't itemized really. I mean, the Drow has, but... Visage has Hex now. They do grab S triple C. That's one way. That's a start. Hey, you can't do that. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. But he has buyback, so yeah. not a big deal. Not a huge deal, but a few more of those. I, I still think Illidan needs the Hurricane fight. He even has the Aquila. You just need the Force Staff. It would have saved him at least once this game, if not twice. I think it's a blunder not to have it. Yeah, I think going BKB is more important. Well, get both. Yeah, he's got the BKB. I'm not saying sell yeah, the BKB. Yeah, but he bought a Lincoln's too. Like, can you really go? I think you're just going to end up selling the, dra the uh, Dragonlance for a damage item and keeping your BKB and your Lincoln's. Yeah. That would be a lot of slots. I mean, I just I think it's the build up, right? Like, you get the Hurricane Pike early. If you have to sell it late game, fine. But it gives you so much in the early mid game, you know? So does Dragonlance for a lot cheaper. That's not as good, but it's cheaper. It's not even close, dude. Look at this draw. What is Dragonlance on to keep her alive this game? Actually HP. nothing. Yeah, but she needed a Shadow Blade. She needed a Lincoln's. And she needed what, a Force What can staff. you do? I don't think so. I think it's fine. I don't know. So much initiation like that. It's like as soon as they get on her, she's just dead. There's no peel. There's no reset. Like she gets initiated on, Slardar counter initiates and stuns, and then she's still just standing there. <laughs> you know, at least with the Force Staff, like, the stuns come, you have the birds come down, you have an opportunity to try to maneuver out. It just feels such like such an all-in build on trying to end this game, and they were never even really close to ending it. I mean, that one lane of barracks fell pretty quickly, but... You have an Ember and a Gyro, so one lane is nothing. Exactly. That's yeah. like, they, they were never, there was never a threat of newbie feeling like this game was gonna end. But even now, like, it feels like Nubi are struggling to close this out. Maybe not struggling, but they're respecting that they can't just run up to the high ground and end it. Yeah, they've clawed their way back from that. I mean, it was almost 20k, and it's down to 13. That's what I mean. So. Like, Nubi are respecting, you know, if they pick off that Ember another time, like they just saw, ah, that gets down below 10k, and we've got kind of an even game on our hands again. And that's what's so damn scary about the Drow Visage. 
Because you're right, it it doesn't really scale into the late game, but it does in that just, it gives you the burst. It gives you the pick. This is one hell of a stalemate though, my friend. Yeah, this has been a, a quiet one. Both teams are struggling to find this initiation. This This does tend to happen when you get to these games where there's kind of a lot on the line, right? Yep. Final series of the uh, of the group. Yeah. Newbie know if they throw this away here, it's going to feel real bad in that bracket. So they want to make sure that they play this safe, take a win, Jeez. then just get us a nice reset into game three. Look at and all those cooldowns. And <laughs> look at that. Wow. It's a hurricane pike. Yeah, but he has his BKB and his Lincolns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's good. Uh, they got to end the game. And oh, now it's get good. Get all the items they can. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Ah, he didn't disassemble his ring, though. Tisk tisk. That is a tisk tisk. That, that's a tisk tisk. That, 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 tisk. that, that yeah, is come on, wasted now. value. You got to get in there. What is the play here? Like, how does either team break this stalemate? I understand why Spirit are playing the way that they are because they're on the back foot. They kind of need to wait for Newbie to give them an opening. But. What is the play for Newbie? I mean, are they waiting out next Roche? I can't imagine they'd want to wait that long. Oh, maybe this is it. G pops the BKB. Doom's in relatively deep, but Faith gets a big ultimate on the back line. Some follow-up fatal bonds. FNG might be the one that gets left behind, but the rest of Spirit's still alive. No buyback on FNG as SCCC is in deep, and he's going hard. The Leshrac has fallen. He does have a buyback, but now Slardar, he's doomed with BKB on. He's going to try to run back to the well. The buyback from the left. Game not over quite yet. Spirit need to get something out of this. But I don't know if they're going to be able to. All right. Back to stalemate we go. So <laughs> Glorious. Buyback on the Lesh. Dazzles is still on cooldown, coming up in about 30 seconds. And it's back up to a 20k net worth lead. Octarine Core now out on the Ember Spirit. See how Drow was able to live there, though, Trent? Yeah, the enhanced that mobility. Pike, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So he's got the plus one second searing chain. He's got himself the Octarine Core. This is that point where Ember is just. Yeah. They so did nerf hard. it a little bit, so it's uh, four second duration with the six second cooldown. Okay. Still pretty damn good, though. <laughs> pretty damn good, yeah. <laughs> Double damage up top. The rune that could maybe tip the scales. Drow, go check it out. You need this. You don't know DK you need Phobos it. split push. Well, he's going to pull back the Ember. And Ember is just the perfect hero for this situation. Yeah, pulls him back for about two seconds. Very few heroes have that same kind of mobility that he does to try to stop these split pushes. I think Newbie has to play this, this kind of like defensively and cautiously though. Big stun from Phobos, and there's no follow up. Guys? Okay. This is just still like in the top lane. See, like Newbie have to be careful because like there's a point where if they commit to anything, Visage can kind of just run down the mid if there's not backdoor protection and just kind of destroy the tier fours. Ah, uh, that is possible, I suppose. I, I feel like they're just... Like, he has an AC and everything. You know, he shreds building. Here's the initiation, though. Dazzle getting low again. Stunned up. Dead. No buyback. This time, short on goal, but they do kill KP. A trade that's not bad for Spirit, especially if they can get more here. A 4v4, BKB from G now on cooldown. S Triple C connects on two. But that'll be it. They repel. Dazzle for Doom. For me, it's just like that scythe is so worrisome from the uh, Visage. And, well, that's a little bit of damage too. mid, but it's just like that makes me want my Aegis. You know, my yeah. Ember Spirit doesn't have a Manta. He doesn't have a BKB. He doesn't have any way to get rid of that silence from the Drought Ranger. See, but doesn't waiting this out also potentially present Spirit with the possibility to get the next Roche because they kill Roche in, what, 10 seconds? 12 seconds or something? I mean, yeah, it's pretty fast. They I think they both it. kill it pretty fast. They both point. kill it pretty fast. I'm just saying more like, if let's say it spawns early, right, and Spirit yeah. are right there and they happen to catch it and Newbie are just a little spread out. Yeah, they will kill it. There fast. aren't a lot of access points. You know, no. you can't just run there in the amount of time that Spirit kills it. So while I agree 
it is still a, a risk that's being presented here that Spirit could potentially find a foothold, but it feels like this game should be over. It feels I mean, like, like newbies should just have this in the bag and yeah. they can just kill this round, they can end it, but there's still that hope. And I feel like I'm starting to sound like a Team Spirit fanboy, but they can still do this. Like, there is some hope. There's a reason why newbie are playing this so cautiously, because they know how devastating this draft can be if they yeah, mess up. I don't know. At the same time, they have pretty weak high ground defense. Like, Spirit or newbie? Spirit. I feel like once they have the Aegis, the Cheese, and the Refresher, they, I just don't know how they're going to fail the high ground push again. I, I would agree with that. I think if, if like, they secure this next Roche, um, it would be only so misplays. much work from oh. the Slider to get that done. Oh, only through misplays, I think, is the way. FNG, ooh, he's going to get caught out again. I don't believe there will be a buyback on this Dazzle, and they will have to let him go. 350 gold short. Has the big boy respawned yet? Nope, not quite. And he will be up in 50 seconds, so there will be a 20-second window there of 5v4 when Roshan is up. And... Pretty close to that max timer as well, so newbie will uh, probably be able to get it, I would imagine. And all of their cooldowns are available, <laughs> so so we wander. Yeah, just going line. And that Ember and Gyro, though, they've done Ember and Gyro things. They really have. And kind of climb back in. Visage has started to fall down in terms of overall net worth. Just because, I mean, the birds are flying around, but it's just not the same. Oh, so uh, Warlock hits level 25. And he goes for the armor rather than magic. Definitely. I mean, look at that lineup. Yeah. And it's definitely the key. And they're hunting for Illidan. I think they're going to find him. He's got the glimmer, but they got a gem on mine. And he doesn't have a buyback. Uh-oh. But here's the split push. They force out a glyph. The birds. And the birds are just going to get cleaned up. They don't finish off the tower. How does Lesh not have a buyback? Is it on cooldown still? Okay, two minutes. My bad. Yeah. Thought he was, well, he's, yeah. Man, those buyback timers are pretty long. You had to use it from that last. That's how long it's been since the last high ground. Yeah. It's been six minutes. All right. Okay. So in the pit. In the rush. Is there any way Spirit can contest this? Do they have any kind of opening here? I don't think so. No. Roche is just going to fall too quickly. Already down to about two thirds HP. Yep. I'm with you, Trent. I have no idea how Spirit are going to be able to hold this. With Aegis, Cheese, Refresher, and Lesh dead for another 30. Well, on one of the first pushes, they just blew up SCCC, and that kind of ended it. And that is theoretically possible. Uh, he doesn't have a BKB to just go crazy. He has the Lincolns, so if they pop the Lincolns and just hex them or, uh, or something, then maybe that'll be it, and maybe they just hold, but they're still down 26k. So it's a, a long road. Yeah. Although we're getting to that point also where some of these heroes are slotted. Like there's a, a rapier on the gyro right now. Huh, got the Aegis might Which as well. Which is also a little bit scary. You know, with the Aegis, it makes you feel more safe. But it just gives me that feeling of like, well, now newbie have to play even more care. Because if yeah. they give that rapier away, this game could actually swing. 30k net worth. 31k. I wonder if they've noticed yet. Is it birds? Oh, fingered, hexed up. He's it's hating these things. Pretty worth it. I mean, these birds have pretty much kept them in this game, if we're being real. Yeah. And they're actually on cooldown for another five seconds, but not going to matter. Relatively annoying. See that bottom bird just flying into the base as they get resummoned. Oh, the old rapier boy. Old rapier boy. Oh, searing chains, not gonna connect there. 
Double damage on Drow Ranger. Trent. <laughs> wow. Is this the rune? Now Spirit have a rapier. I mean, Butterfly is something on Drow, but it just seems... She's got 2,100 HP. I don't know. Now Moogie moves into the enemy base. Big damage coming out. They force the glyph. Now the rock comes. Doom gets used onto Slardar. They've already killed Dazzle, and this bottom lane will fall. Looks like this could be the end for Spirit. It is a 4v5. Buyback used by Slardar. Dazzle does not have one. Short on gold. BKB, remember, a double damage is on Drow, or it was. Looks like it just expired. Her BKB also going to be done. Such a tough hold to make as now Drow gets initiated on. The calldowns are there, and Illidan finally goes down. No buyback available. It's looking good for Newbie to be able to secure this game now. Crimson Guard delaying the push a little bit. Doom used. Smartar again will fall. This time it's a dieback. With only two left alive, Spirit are running out of resources. There's the buyback now on the Visage. Lesh not going to have the gold. And they go for the Tier 4's GG as a Game 3 is secured. Well, they played it right to the bitter end. Uh, even when it felt completely out of reach for the strategy they went for, they battled. They got maybe to make a couple mistakes, and maybe they're just tiring them out. Maybe that's the play here. Ah, the old exhaustion, yeah. wearing out the defense, huh? Yeah, you know, they had to sit a while. They're like, yeah, we lost this game, but... That was a stressful a game to watch, honestly. It, it probably felt pretty stressful for Newbie, too, right? Because they must have been a little bit worried about going high ground if they took that long to actually a little go bit ahead worried. and get it done. Dude, they yeah. must have been super worried. They were 30K <laughs> ahead, and they were still afraid to push high ground. Yeah. They got yeah. Roche, and they yeah. were still like, are we sure we want to do this? You guys Lugie, really want to go? Wait. Do you, do you want to get another Moon Shard just in case? I yeah. don't know. Can they dispel it? I'm not sure. We might need to just get another backup Moon Shard. Should we get another backup Rapier? That was not an easy game for Newbie to end. And they played no. it very safe. Almost too safe, it felt like. But it did work out in the end. You have that, to respect the Drow, the Drow Visage. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the fear, though. It's really a scary, a scary duo. I mean, G tried his best to keep him in that game with the split-pushing birds. But yeah. it just wasn't enough. Uh, boys and girls, we're going to take a break. We're coming into the final game. It's been a long day one here at the Super Major, but day. we've got one more match coming your way. This has been some pretty epic Dota 2, and hey, this is just day one, day one of this event. So don't go anywhere because we're coming right back after this break.